to the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker my question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement that by early 2010 New Zealand will be coming out of recession reasonably aggressively? Right. The hon Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, yes, I stand by my full quote from March 2009 which is uh, the same one I said yesterday and I'll enjoy saying it every day that I get the opportunity to, which is I think by the end of 2009, early 2010, this time next year we'll actually be starting to come out of that. I think actually starting to come out of it reasonably aggressively. I'm more optimistic about 2011 than 2010, but nevertheless I think 2010 will be positive. As I said yesterday, those statements have proved to be absolutely, entirely and 100 per cent correct. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker. What responsibility does the Prime Minister take for an economy that has stalled, for revenue and uh, employment not to have grown by the uh, predictions that were set six months ago, and for a deficit that has ballooned out of control because, as Fran Sullivan said, his tax switch was a fizzer? That's right. The right on the time. Well, if it's a fizzer, reverse it. There you go. That's <laughs> right. The only, the only thing in society he's not going to do any more of is the bus. It's the bus. We won't see him on the bus. Okay, Mr. Speaker, let me go to the Haifu for a moment and to pick up the Leader of the Opposition's assertion that growth hasn't been that strong. Growth forecast to 2011, 2.5%. What was it in 2009? 1.9%. What was it when the government inherited it? Minus 3.2%. What was it the year earlier? 2.1%. What was it the year earlier than that? 1.7%. What was it the year earlier than that? 2.4%. In other words, you have to go all the way back to 2004 to get growth like you've had this year. Is it spectacular? No. But we're in the middle of a global financial crisis. Crisis. Mr Speaker, I don't think the Leader of the Opposition has got any comments he should make. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, if everything is as rosy as the Prime Minister would have us believe, how does he account for the Chamber of Commerce survey in Auckland yesterday of a thousand firms that showed business confidence at the lowest level in a decade? That's right. The right Honourable Prime it. Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, it... Uh, it reflects the fact that uh, the international situation is difficult, and I think people find that. But I, I, I always take polls with a grain of a grain of salt, and I know the leader of the opposition probably should as well. <laughs> Chris Tremaine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Prime Minister, how much is the high food deficit track an improvement on previous forecasts? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, good question. The high food uh, track shows that the government's budget coming back into surplus in 2015-16. That compares to the 2008 prefu forecast, where the Treasury was expecting a decade of deficits. Members will recall headlines such as this one, where the Treasury books a sea of red. And then, two months later, the updated forecasts were even worse, showing never-ending deficits and debt. I'm amazed you've made it past question one. It's a miracle for you, Trevor. Anyway, Mr Speaker, the long and short of it is deficits coming under control. Entry the question, Mr Speaker. The opposition. Did the Prime Minister say six months ago that the deficit then was as high as it should be allowed to go, as reported in the paper this morning, and what excuses does he have for the fact that that deficit is now billions of dollars higher than he said that it should be That's six right. months ago? That's right. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Mr Speaker, six months ago I didn't predict there'd be an earthquake in Canterbury. Oh. Mr. The Mr. Honourable Rodney Hyde. Uh, order. Order. I've called the Honourable Rodney Order. Order. Members are having a, a reasonably boisterous day because it is the last day of term as one might say, but there's a limit to how uh, boisterous it should be. The Honourable Rodney Hyde. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister, uh, does it concern him that the... Sorry? Order, 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 order. Would the member please take no notice of other members and ask his question? The Honourable Rodney Hyde. Is that an order? The Honourable Rodney Hyde. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Prime Minister, uh, does it concern him that Labour leader Phil Gough 
is so bereft of ideas that he's reduced to asking the same question day after day. Order, I point of order, the Honourable Chairman. Miller. Well, I mean, cle clearly, um, first of all, the question's overall out of order. Secondly, there's something the Prime Minister has no responsibility for. I think, uh, order, order the. Uh, I mean, members can ask opinions, but I think to uh, uh, make the dilemma with this particular question, it made an assertion in the question that was unreasonable and unfair, I think. Uh, I've got no problem with, with members asking questions that seek opinions, but, it, but I think the question was uh, somewhat unfair. I invite the member to reword the question, try and bring it more than standing orders. The Honourable Rodney Thank you, Mr Speaker. Order. The Honourable Rodney Hyde. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has there been any consideration by the Government to provide the opposition with more resources, uh, given that the Labour Party is so bereft of ideas that day after day they're asking the Prime Minister the same question. Mr. Right Speaker, the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker um, yes, there has been consideration. Um, but one thing I found with the Leader of the Opposition is repetition does help him. If he just goes to bed at night going, Cunliffe, 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 he'll eventually get it right. Question, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, why did Order. the. I've called the. On Order. Order. I say to the National Party backbenchers on this occasion, a bit of fun's OK, but please, I've called the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, why did the Prime Minister tell the House yesterday that his tax cuts for the wealthy had no effect on borrowing or the deficit when the Treasury reported yesterday that it in fact trebled the deficit to over three billion dollars. Right. The right honourable prime minister, Mr. Speaker, um, leader of the opposition is completely off beam. There, if one goes and has a look at the April 2009 tax cuts and the one October tax cuts, adds them up over the four-year forecast period, they are a net surplus of 132 million dollars. Chris Speaker, Tremaine, to the, prime, to the prime minister, has he seen any reports of alternative fiscal strategies? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes, and in particular I've seen one fiscal strategy which runs a little bit like this. Um, first, it's to bring in less revenue by taking GST off fruit and vegetables and by not taking dividends from electricity companies or SOEs. Although I have to say, as an anecdotal, of anecdotal interest, I asked the fruit and vegetable shop uh, keeper what he thought of that uh, where I live, and he said, I'd rather pay three times more GST than have Labor back. So that was the first thing he said. The second was to spend more than the government is on a whole range of things, which include the super fund and R&D. And the third was to boast that one is going to pay off debt much faster than the government is. This makes no sense. This is Phil Goff's plan. The the Honourable Leader of the Mr Speaker, does the Prime Minister take responsibility for the fact that while Australia has created 54,000 new jobs last month alone, his gimmicks, like the cycle way and the job summit, have created no jobs at all. The right honourable prime minister. Uh, no, because that's not correct. Question. I beg your pardon, Sumeroni. Thank you. Supplementary to the prime minister. How will it help New Zealand to come out of the recession when more than 93,000 New Zealand families face increased costs for early childhood education of up to $80 per week? per child because of his funding cuts to early childhood education. The right Mr. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, well firstly I refute the assertion that it's 93,000. Secondly, it's an important point actually for the government uh, to note that there is not less money going into early childhood education, there is more money going into childhood childhood education. Oh yes there is. And the third thing is, the third thing is Mr Speaker, well they can't have it always can they? This is a government that's maintained entitlements and benefits to New Zealanders. Yes, it's had an impact on the deficit that Phil Goff was just moaning about, it, but the new alternative leader of the Labour Party wants to spend more money. Order. Is this a further supplementary, further question? supplementary question? Order. I say to members, I have to be able to hear. I, I acknowledge it's the last uh, term. It's bound to be a bit noisy, but I must be able to hear members. Sue Maroney. To the Prime Minister. Is he aware then? Is he aware then of recently released survey results showing that 90% of centres will have to increase their fees to families? And why is his Minister of Education 
wrote into early childhood education facilities advising them that, quote, you may wish to consider 